uh, jamón ibérico. That's that. I was in the uh, airport today yeah. in Puerto Rico, San Juan Airport, and they had just big old jamones hanging like meat stalactites yeah. right <laughs> in the airport. Yeah, I love, um, you know, when I'm with a special person, I, I, I do the miming of uh, slicing their leg off to smoke it, and I'm like, mm, you'd make a nice jamón ibérico. <laughs> That's my pillow talk. You know, maybe I've watched too much Hannibal. Yeah, it's a little savage. <laughs> it is. It's a little yeah. savage. Like I've just been getting into the cannibalism stuff. Like I watched that movie alive just to bring back some good feelings. Yeah. Well, I I think that's uh that's that movie is one of my favorites when uh, it comes to inspiration and the indomitable will of man to survive. Right. And we're eventually going to end up in a live type situation, uh, as a as a humanity. humanity. Yeah, <laughs> <You know>? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we really, really are. Uh, I I don't think I think a lot of people are asleep at the wheel and not realizing that. But like, there is going to be a blight and a plague and a bunch of natural disasters that wipes out our food sources and our ability to like produce more food, and then it's going to be a free for all for like. I think maybe for the last 20 or 30 years of my life, I have, like, as a toddler, I'm walking around uh, Southern California. My grandparents would take me on rides through Utah, uh, the Southwest, you know, Arizona uh, and uh, Cali, and they constantly talked about droughts, or I would go to these places that were natural deserts, and then I would look at the cities that had sprung up in these deserts and just scratch my head and be like, how is this sustainable? Yeah, this is not real. <laughs> it's, like, it's like I went to Dubai, and I hated it so much because it's literally a city built out of slavery. And sure, and where do they import their um, their human uh, capital from? South Asia, and it's all it's all lies. Basically, someone is like, you know, that you could go to Dubai and make like a thousand dollars a day, and there people are like, really. Like, oh, of course, like, it's a magical land where all your dreams can come true. And then they get there, and they're quote-unquote indentured servants, and their passports are taken from them, and they're never allowed to leave until they make back the cost of their travel there in the amount that they're, you know what I mean? Like, so they are indentured servants. So I saw that, and they usher them out of spaces so that people don't have to confront that reality. So, like, they're, like, lay low. Don't fucking, like, look at anyone or talk to anyone. And at nighttime, like, you don't exist here. We, like, shuttle you into the desert. Syriana style. Wow. So they put them on a sort of a, 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 a indentured servant Google vans out of the city center. To, yeah, they're uh, massive buses, and they have, like, no air conditioning, and they shove them in there. And then they drive them two hours, three hours out of the city, and then they sleep in barracks and wake up after, like, five, six hours, maybe less, and then go right back to, like, work. Sure. And they, they probably need a lot of Pedialyte, I imagine that. <laughs> That's probably all they get for food. Which Working is in the sun, yeah. Yeah, so anyway, but yeah, it was that. I was like, none of this is real, including the water surrounding this place. It's man-made. It's, like, false. Yeah, and it can't be sustainable without, uh, 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 like, this just continuous energy just waste of energy and human capital to keep these things uh, going. Like I just think about all the golf courses in Arizona or how much water uh, uh, Los Angeles consumes oh, yeah. uh, every year. And and then there's uh, forest fires constantly. And California is the breadbasket of the U.S., really. Like, you know, when you have the plains and whatnot, but that's where, like, all of our produce comes from. Yeah, straight so, up. All the good shit. <laughs> yeah, <all laughs> they're those... not growing corn there. I'll tell you that much. Delicious grapes and strawberries. Yeah, and fucking avocados and artichokes. Napa Valley, all the wine. Oh, yeah. God. <laughs> yeah, Sideways. What a great movie. So, dude, I rewatched that and Election. Sure. Oh, my God. Election's on Netflix. I don't know if you've watched it in a while, but I forgot about so many of the jokes in it and so many of the depressing scenes in it. Mm-hmm. But Alexander Penn is the king of like sadness. <laughs> like sadness humor, but yeah, unbelievable. Sideways is such a good movie too. I rewatched that recently and love that shit. Yeah, so people in like you know forty years, if they're still around, are gonna watch Sideways and be like, "This area was once fertile and fecund." <laughs> yeah, 
And now it's like either in the ocean, yeah, or it's fucking on fire. Sure, just like a road warrior, uh, coal charred landscape. Yeah, it's crazy that all these people in Malibu who have like property there, it's so expensive. But like that shit's gonna be in the ocean in like a couple decades. I mean, it's just Bitcoin. It's just Bitcoin with land. Like we're we're already doing the thing that now you know we're we're throwing money into like fake. Um, monetary systems, and in the well, I don't know. That's my take on it. We we've already been doing that for years with just uh, land speculation and building up on places that can't sustain people. Right. I wonder why people live in a false reality where they think that this shit isn't all going to collapse later, and they're investing like real capital and money in things that are doomed to fail. Sure. Well, the hundred and forty dollars that I put into Ethereum. Or I think no, I think it was just Bitcoin. Uh, it's now eighty dollars. Oh, but if you had done it, if you had done it back like when we were at Pete's all the time, and I was pumping Ethereum and Bitcoin with, right? Yeah, you would be like up there. But don't worry, don't even pull it out. It's not worth pulling out. Oh, I wouldn't juncture. pull it out. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but the reason I got into it was uh, a friend in the neighborhood um, during the pandemic. Uh, we went for a couple walks. And every time we'd walk within 15 minutes of us being outside and just looking at the beautiful sky, he'd be like, hey, so uh, what do you know about uh, blockchain? And he, he just kept talking about it. So I was like, look, I'm going to put $140 into this to shut you up because it's going to end our friendship if you keep <laughs> talking to me. <laughs> I recently, I did it, uh, so I did it back in the day, I bought in at like 5000 on Bitcoin, Sure. and then I was on this trip to Australia, and like the night before I went to Australia, I moved it all to like Gemini, which is the Winklevoss like brothers like sure. thing. It just and, sounds like a great water company. Winkle yeah, Voss. I can't believe they got, yeah, Winklevoss. Like, you're, like, like you're, purified from the Alps. Like sleepy water? Yeah. Like, they're <laughs> like, you drink this and it'll put you to bed and it's just water and like sedatives. Mm. Yeah, water and, and mel- uh, what is it, a melatonin. Yeah, yeah. Mm, keep you calm for the impending apocalypse. <laughs> it's I, <laughs> it's so good. Though. Think about this, though. With Ethereum and Bitcoin and shit, it solely exists based on the concept of computing power. Now, if some like um, insane electromagnetic pulse hit the fucking world, right? And like wiped, in Blade Runner two, right? And then like wiped out computers, you're just like, ah, fuck. Wouldn't you want to have something to trade physical that would like serve some purpose? Yeah, bro. Like apricot seeds. Sure. <laughs> fucking <laughs> just like a clean whole, water. Yeah, like a pillowcase full of apricot pits. <laughs> Right. Be like, what up, man? You guys want to keep making fruits? <laughs> exactly. You're like, it's going to take a long ass time and you might yeah. get kind of sick of these apricots, but at least I'll be able to like survive a little longer. Yeah, that's right. I've also got plum and peach. Just stone fruits. Would you would you duke it out and try and survive if the shit popped off and really was the apocalypse? Or would you just be like, we'll have a couple good days and then call it night night? Mm-hmm. I, I think... Uh, you know, I'd I want I'd eat someone. <laughs> I know you would just just for the experience. In the past, <laughs> they're year. like, bro, we we're not there yet. Why are you eating people <laughs> yeah, already? They're like, hey man, this is just a a power outage on your block. You don't yeah. need to eat. We someone. just call my little strip my block becomes the new Lechon Highway. <laughs> yeah, you just, I, I just start up my own like human barbecue pit. <laughs> They're like, uh, yeah, it was just like a quick brownout. Like, the electricity is back. <laughs> yeah. yeah, bro, the power was just out for like six hours. Yeah, they're like, no <laughs> one's food even spoiled. Yeah. <laughs> I've already got like an apron in the other room and like a hacksaw ready yeah, to go. Like a leg spinning on like a shawarma. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I just, well, we started with my landlord. <laughs> Everyone's like, oh, I'll have some of that barbacoa. <laughs> I got, I got a oh, soup brewing you're in the other room. Beer, yeah, out yeah. Of your landlord? That's cool. Yeah, I'm making a nice broth over here with her bones. So, oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, speaking of fucking delicious food, you just returned from a trip, huh? Yeah, I was in Puerto Rico for five days. I'm and it jealous. was, uh, well, okay, man. So, Puerto Rico is wild. Uh, lots of feral cats, uh, roosters all everywhere day. all day. And, I don't know if anyone owns these roosters. I don't think so. 
I I have been led to believe they feed exclusively on trash because I'll just see one dart out from behind a trash, uh, uh, like like a like a can or one of those big um, bins, and then it looks like the bin pooped out a bunch of chicks because like all of these chicks will just pop out of the bin and then follow uh, their mom like to the next trash can. Oh my God. That's all they eat. The, they're like the rats of the neighborhood because I guess the rats get eaten by the feral cats. Right. But whenever the cats try to attack one of the uh, the the pollos, yeah, yo those <laughs> those pollo locos will fuck up those feral cats. <laughs> yeah. Those roosters. That's something so interesting to me because like in Kauai, the island in Hawaii, sure, like it's all like gajinas, you know, like mm-hmm. and they're like very colorful and amazing, and they're like some of them are the ones from like that. LEG episode where he's like, why is that rooster wearing those pants? Because it's they're like fucking crazy looking. They have like black and white ones that look like they're wearing like a suit. Yeah, the and, roosters look the most regal. Yeah, they're amazing. And like, but that's an island thing. Like when I was in the Greek island of Naxos, for example, there were like feral cats everywhere. Yeah, like, dude, these cats all look like they got buried in a pet cemetery. They came back and they're not happy. They have. <laughs> Just like the weirdest amber colored eyes, and they will they just stare down traffic, you know, like they don't get out of the street when you're in, when they're in the middle, yeah, you know, kind of like how I walk across the street in New York because I jaywalk fra- flagrantly here, yeah, yeah, but they're just doing that with their whole lives. The, the jaywalk is a powerful move. It's definitely I actually heard something about this where like I call it the sixty degree shuffle. Where, like, you're driving down the street and someone crosses jaywalk style, but they do it in the, like, longest um, way possible. So they, like, do it at 60 degrees, like, that cross the street diagonally yeah. as slow as possible. Slice at an angle, totally. It, yeah. I want to inconvenience you the most as a human if you're in a car. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so, um, but because the, the island has so much traffic... I don't know, man. These pigeons, they had pigeons there, too. They all look like they were sleeked in oil. And the cats, it's so hot. Cause, so the cats and the pigeons, they hide underneath the cars during the day right. that are parked. So they just get covered in, like, oil. auto oil soot. They look like Mad Max characters. They are, They look like what humans are going to look like in the charred landscape of California <laughs> in 2045. <laughs> That's amazing. I love how, like, I was seeing some of your photos, but, like, I did want to ask you about, like, the size ratio of different things, like the huge doorways versus, I mean, what is the purpose of those huge doorways for real, though? Maybe conquistadors had to ride their on horseback into the houses. I'm making up history now. That would be hilarious. <laughs> You're like, you have horse shit all over your living room floor, you disgusting conquistadors. Yeah. They wonder why the, like, black plague happened to them. Oh, they were filthy. You know, I mean, did we talk about this before? But like when the um, when the uh, conquistadors or Europeans in general showed up at the islands, they were shocked that the indigenous peoples would um, would uh, wave sage around them, and they thought it was uh, it was religious. Right. But they were just like uh, burning sage around the Europeans because they smelled so bad. <laughs> so they, they were like, "Yo, these funky ass blue eyed devils stank." And it was, and so yeah, uh, Europeans stopped bathing after the um, at Black Plague, right? Right, because they thought that they were getting it from like the water. Yeah, yeah. which is nuts. I mean, they probably were getting like typhoid and Black Plague because they were shit pissing in the water itself. And then, sure, like, they, they love doing it. that too. Yeah, <laughs> like you know, running sewage for like thousands of years after people in like Mexico and India. Had, like, established, like, aqueducts and running, like, water and plumbing and shit. Sure. And Europeans knew how to do uh, aqueducts when the Romans were doing it. But then after Rome fell, uh, they forgot again. (laughs) (laughs) Which was kind of like a hard drive crash. Or what will happen to us when there is a solar flare? Because I don't know how to do anything. All the technology and knowledge that I have is based on the work of others. So if that got erased, I would go back to just... I mean, I understand germ theory, but I couldn't build, I couldn't maintain a sewer system. Right. I would know shit. And I already feel like weird about it where I'm like, um, if my phone died and I was driving in a car and I was driving to a show, I'd have a <laughs> nuclear meltdown. 
Yeah. I'd be like, how the fuck do I get there? And I stopped even having to use my, I mean, Manhattan's a different story. It's easy, but. Sure. Grids. Grids. But like, if you have to go to like, go on us or something, you're fucking doomed. Yeah. So when I first moved to New York, this was before uh, smartphones, uh, I had a compass with me. And I was at like an urban Boy Scout because I'd pop out of the subway, and oftentimes there isn't the intersection labeled clearly. Right. So I'd just look at my compass and be like, "Oh, north, okay, that way to Harlem." And I'm just. That's amazing. Yeah. You're like, this was three years ago. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I right. was doing this as of three years ago. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I was a, an ur, an urban survivalist. I got those little toe shoes with the toes. Oh, my God. What happened to those? <laughs> and I uh, carried my own jerky that I'd been making. Yes. I was really into pickling things. And I only carried a, a compass. Yeah, toe guys. Ugh, you don't see those anymore. But, dude, at the gym, there's this craze of people going barefoot at my gym entirely mm-hmm. and working out with heavy weights. And I'm just, like, waiting for one to drop on their foot and just smash it into a million pieces. Because it's, like, disgusting to me. Just put some fucking shoes on. Sure, you don't want to see toes wiggle while you're exerting yourself. <laughs> it's weird as fuck. And it's, like... It just immediately turns me off about the person where I'm like, oh, okay, you're like a biohacker or whatever. You think that the like shoes are giving you drag while you're like doing like bench press? The fuck, crazy. That's wild. So it's it's just guys, or is this is this a unisex thing that you you feel like you can't you don't want to look at people's feet when they're working out? No, me? yeah, I would. It's it's nobody's feet. I don't. I think it's obnoxious. Mm-hmm. I just think it's just them trying to be like. I know something you don't know. I like that Patrice bit about uh, the TSA being full of creeps because I was just uh, in the airport coming back from Puerto Rico and going there as well. And so many, um, you know, uh, n- nice looking uh, people, ladies, uh, they would t- <laughs> had to take off their shoes to go through the uh, x ray machine. And I was like, dude, man, you, of course, like uh, some TSA agents got to be staring at those feet all day long because I was. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I just feel like they're they got to be creeps. Yeah, I see it. Uh, Puerto Rico was dope. Yeah, it was real fun. Uh, also sad, but I don't really know what the solution is. There were like a ton of empty buildings there, and um, they're clearly still all all wrecked from Hurricane Maria, and uh, and also I mean, but COVID it didn't seem like it seemed like they were over that. You know, like, you know, people were wearing masks. Everybody felt safe. But uh, but I ran into some people, uh, former comedians who now live there and are biohackers. No way. And health dudes. And uh, this guy I bumped into didn't get vaccinated, uh, is down with the gringo community there. And he got COVID four weeks ago at a gringo like biohacker Bitcoin bro event that turned into a super spreader event. Oh my God. And he told you this? Hell yeah. Uh, was he lamentful about it? Was he like, you know what? I should have probably taken it seriously. No, I mean, well, he said, I can see why if you have like diabetes or uh, asthma, if you're old, like it's important to get vaccinated. Yeah. And also all of those people would get it from a healthy person, like spreading it. Right. <laughs> so... Anyway, I always think it's fun when people that didn't get vaccinated get COVID. Yeah, me too. It's I'm fun. Like, so you won in the end? <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I don't wish it on anybody, but also, hey, <laughs> whatever. You, you roll the dice. Yeah. Um, yeah, so there's a ton of people who have moved to Puerto Rico, I guess, uh, to um, uh, evade taxes. It's a big tax shelter. Uh, a big tech, big tech bro. What's the taxes area. thing? What are you into tax shelter? It's just much lower taxes. And probably like no income tax or something. Or yeah, they just aggressive. No state income tax or something. Uh, well, because it's not a state. Right. Bung. It's not a state. And uh, the new people that have moved there are like, you just can't get anything done here because the government is just so, there's so much red tape. Uh, it's so inefficient. And there's this complaint people make about like, um, you know, governments in places that are that they are considered like third world almost, but it's like, dude, the government here is inefficient 
because it is completely hamstrung by the United States. Right. You know? And they don't have their own, they, they just don't have control of anything. So it's like, man, it'd be really cool if Puerto Rico was a state, I guess, if Puerto Ricans wanted it to be. It might be cool if they wanted it to be independent. But if it was independent, it doesn't make its own stuff. Right, so they would be forced to import. Yes. Yeah, you'd still have to import everything, except the mofongo. Right. <laughs> so, yeah, so they just have, like, like platanos, and they have... Rum, little piggies. Yeah. You know, some coffee. But, you know, right now, this sort of, like, weird Commonwealth thing is, is being stuck between a rock and a hard place. Yeah, I mean, I saw, like, a thing once about the campesinos that were, like, starving there, and then there was this massive, like, migration to the mainland, to, like, New York of all places. More Puerto Ricans in the United States mainland than there are on the island. Yeah. So, there's that. It's too bad, because I, I was telling Amanda, I was like, yeah, this, uh, all these photos I see of Puerto Rico are so beautiful, and imagine being, like, from Puerto Rico, such a beautiful place with, like, such beautiful beaches and all this shit. And then you moved to New York, and it's just, like, rats everywhere. And <laughs> everything smells like shit. Yeah. And you're like, great. This is what I have to do to make a fucking living? Come to this place? That's right, man. But here's the thing. So you saw beautiful pictures that I took from old San Juan. And I basically spent uh, four days in the Times Square of Puerto Rico. Because old San Juan, it looks nice. And it is beautiful. But that's just one little, that is, like, the tourist trap area. Right. You know, and the beaches are supposedly all public. But even uh, when you get into San Juan proper, there's all these high rises right on the beach and all these private hotels. And then there's security guards there that are like, no, no puedes, no puedes entrar. You know, really? so like it's public, but you, you have to take like a skiff, you know, from another beach. You have to, you have to biohack it. By like going out to sea, <laughs> you have to try <laughs> swim. <laughs> you have to start on the other side of the island and swim over it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's so ruthless. Yeah, man. Yeah. And there's like there's security guys with scuba gear on, and they're like, "No puedes entrar." <laughs> yeah, no puedes. If you can get by me, you can you can use it. But yeah, that's crazy, dude. So, but we we went to uh, public beaches and it was dope, man. Puerto Ricans have a great time. They know how to have fun. Everyone's just at, just you know, it's a it's a sunny culture. Yeah. Warm and welcoming is like Warm and welcoming. Yeah. Just don't expect anything on time. Well, yeah. Well, that's island There's life. There's no time. Yeah. yeah. Island time everywhere. Yeah. Same with India, though. That's like, it's people just drinking chai like nonstop and shooting the shit and not doing anything they're supposed to. It's very frustrating. Well, that's the, uh, when you go to like old um, South American or Central American colonial cities, the ones that were colonized by the Spaniards just have uh, the plaza will have a cathedral. And so it's just like God time. And then if it was a British uh, colony, the plaza will have a clock because they suck. (laughs) 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 Time is money. Nonsense. Yeah. Just like, I mean, both suck, but one is like, worse because it's it puts everything into like a grid right yeah that is interesting though it's like commerce and time are very intertwined because it's all about like how many transactions can we make happen in the least amount of time so that money goes up the pyramid to like the overlords and masters (laughs) you know what i mean yeah like at the end of the day that's what it's all about yeah man so uh, that is island time was it was it was fine for me. I was ha- I was so happy that I didn't go with a family. Uh, I never want to go on vacation with uh, with a large group of people ever again. Oh, yeah. Um, I like being a lone wolf when I travel like, you know, maximum one other person, you know, and you got to have really good communication. Like, Dude, I absolutely agree and understand because like. To mobilize a massive group of people is the fucking most frustrating thing on earth. Everyone has their own will, like an interest and in time and like thing they want to do. And everyone is it's just like herding cats and you're just losing time by the minute. Like Yeah, and you get to do if you if you had five things that you wanted to do, you get to do one of those things. And the one thing that you get to do is a compromise between all of you. And it's typically uh, whatever the youngest and most crying member of the clan 
wants to do. Yeah. And the most ubiquitous thing. So it's like the least interesting. Sure. Because it appeals to everyone. Yeah. Yeah. We got to go on the Pirates of the Caribbean ride. And it's like, man, I don't want to do that. (laughs) (laughs) Did you hear about this collapse in Miami? The hotel collapse? No. Dude, it's crazy. You got to see photos of it. There's 159 people unaccounted for right now. Oh, my God. There's already like 50 people declared dead. Well, some uh, construction company heads are a better role. <laughs> well, they definitely want, and they're on a yacht right now being like, call the insurance company. What can I do for you? Yeah, so did they figure anything out, or is this just like... Biden sending a team to search and rescue and see what they can do, but, I mean, it's that savage. The thing is, the news trickled in yesterday, so I was like, Four people unaccounted for in, like, Miami building collapse. And I was like, oh, that's fucked. That's terrible. Four people. And then today they were like, 159 people unaccounted for. Missing. I'm like, why does the news media let information out in tiny, like, tidbits? And it keeps growing crazier and crazier. It's because they want to be first to report on it. So they're happy, like, incomplete reporting as long as they're first, you know? So the death toll is going to keep creeping up. Maybe it seems like uh, less of a big deal if you only read the head, the first headline. You right, know? right. Maybe they know how many people died early, like right away, and yet they're just slowly letting it trickle out to like ease the shock. Yeah, that could be a thing. Because it's a pretty big deal. If you told me 100, 200 people died in uh, a building collapse, that sounds uh, pretty third world. It does. <laughs> <laughs> and it's in Miami, who has, like, a bustling, like, real estate market, you know? And also a totally unsustainable city plan because their aquifers are being uh, undermined by the real estate, by the overdevelopment. So the city's going to run out of fresh water pretty soon. And uh, there's no getting around that. So, uh, yeah, it's just going to be this beautiful cemetery in, like, 100 years. Nice. And then they'll just be, like, using the swamp water from, like, <laughs> the swamps. Yeah, man. Well, they just, because there's no, you can't get clean water there, and they're destroying the um, the ecosystem, the natural ecosystem with building. Right. You know? And then eroding the beaches by, chop, by uh, cutting down the mangroves for great beachfront property. Wow. Sick. Yeah, I never really fucked with that city too much some people swear by it but i mean i've always wanted to live there after listening to vanilla ice man a1a beach drive avenue and uh I'm, yeah i'm a big fan i like miami vice the tv show yeah i like carl hyacin books uh he wrote a bunch of um like fiction that takes place in miami including strip tease which was made into a movie starring everyone's favorite demi moore uh that's my pop culture aside for today. Also, Dexter. Come on, man. Oh, Dexter was in Miami? Yeah. Wow. So there we go. I, uh, have you been to Miami? I have, yeah. I went there maybe like 10 years ago, and I had a pretty good time. I just ate Cuban food, and um, I got a bunch of records from a record store. Bought some like, um, like Afro-Cuban jazz shit. Um, yeah, it was cool. There was like... A threat of a hurricane while I was there, but it didn't happen, thank God. And Sure, I'm happy uh, to live in a place where we've only had a couple hurricanes. Shout-outs to Sandy. And, uh... Shout-outs to Sandy. <laughs> <laughs> it, like, rearranged this place. Yeah. Yes, it did. And, yeah, I don't know, but I feel pretty fortunate in New York City that we don't have quite as many natural disasters as other parts of the U.S. Yeah. Speaking of natural disasters, though, this week I actually, um, I had like a weird occurrence that is repeatedly happening, and I don't know if it's just some sick joke or something crazy, but I went to the gym, and there were these, like like I mentioned, there are these weird like biohacker types there. There's annoying people there, for sure. Sure. They've all read uh, Tim Ferriss's uh, (laughs) four-hour workout. Yeah, they probably are listening to his podcast while they're like in the gym. Yeah. And um, so... I walk by, going to this gym in Williamsburg, and they have a humongous edifice made of windows that they can open. It's like one of those sliding glass kind of scenarios. <clears throat> so it's open to the street, fresh air. And I look inside, and I see, like, 
a couple of like hot white women not wearing masks, right? And um, everyone else is wearing masks, but it's just these like two or three hot white women. They're not wearing masks. And then I go in and there's like, uh, before I go in, there's another Indian dude, which is very rare. Like, and he is like running up the stairs ahead of me and I see him get to the front door. He has no mask on and they stop him before he walks in and they're like, sir, you need to wear your mask. We still have a mask policy. So he puts his on. So I obviously put mine on and I go in and I see um, a person that's working there and they don't have a mask on either. And so I ask the guy, I'm like, hey, is there a mask policy or not? You know, within earshot of this person who's an employee. And uh, the guy was like, yes, we have a strict mask policy. No matter, like, what the state's policy is, we require that everyone in here wear a mask. And I go, like, everyone has to wear a mask, huh? And he goes, that's right. And I was like, I just shook my head and walked away. And then I left there, and I walked down to the bookstore on Franklin Ave. um, And... This was right after the gym, and I had my mask in my pocket. I go up, and I see a sign on the window, right? And it says, again, like, regardless of the mask policy, we require every patron to wear a mask in the store. As I'm reading the sign, I see behind the glass door at the cash register is another hot white woman wearing no mask and talking to the lady and buying something. Yeah, well, they all have. They probably all have laminated cards that say that they have health problems that that where they can't wear masks. Really, is that yeah. a thing though? What, or what have is a health problem? Or something. That, yeah, uh, it was so frustrating because then I walk in, and I gotta admit I'm a bit of a pussy. So like I I don't I'm not one to like want to have this confrontation. Also, I'm like afraid that'll get taken out of context. Someone will start filming me if I'm arguing with them, and I'm sure. like, what about these motherfuckers? You know. So I just put my mask on it, and as that white lady is buying her thing, I ask the woman up front, I go, I saw this sign on the door. Is a mask required for vaccinated people? And she goes, yes, sir. It's our store policy. As this white woman is directly in front of her wearing no mask and buying something in the store. Is the woman behind the counter wearing a mask? Yes. Okay. And so I go, so everyone has to wear a mask. And she goes, yes. (laughs) <laughs> to my face. And so I just shake my head again, and I go walk around the store, look at things a little bit. It's double the price of what it would cost on Amazon, and I fucking hate Amazon, like, so very much. And I haven't bought anything from them in a very long time, and I've done my best to completely just stop my purchasing well, from them. here's my take on that. Uh, I, I'm an accelerationist. We have to make the world so bad for everyone that they rise up and start sawing the limbs off of their landlords and creating their own lechon highways on their blocks. And the only way that we can do that is if we all stop buying from small bookstores and only buy from Amazon. Right. Everything. Buy everything from Amazon till there's a breaking point. Yeah. I mean, (laughs) this is hell. I see what you're saying. And honestly, that... That's the thing. That's a. This is a great thing to talk about because, like, I I go there and I noticed that the book that I was gonna buy as a gift yeah. was legitimately double the price sure. there than it was on Amazon, and I was still willing to make that concession. Maybe it was selfish to make myself feel better, to make myself feel like I'm still like a punk or something. But that's kind of crazy, you know, especially in a city that is overwhelmingly expensive, overwhelmingly taxes you on everything, and um, just the cost of everything is increased compared to everywhere else in the marketplace. But um, I was so fucking pissed that I just walked out. And um, But I agree with you. I think nothing will happen until everybody has discomfort. As long yeah. as there are, like, an upper crust of society that just continually is, like, fine with everything because it serves their purposes and they don't really feel the burn, there's never going to be a massive revolt or people being like, fuck this, let's just go burn down the, like, factory. 
Well, there's just no ethical consumption under this, under what, what we're doing. So, you know, uh, I don't think anybody should feel smug or better that they're, like, using a tote bag or, like, that the product that they are buying says it's organic on it. If it's, you know, or you don't have plastic straws, but you're still drinking out of a plastic bottle, you know, that kill yourself. It's, like, not, it's all plastic. We're just all full of plastic. Right. Our, our, everyone's ovaries and testicles full of plastic. You're basically going to have a little kid that's ass might as well say made in Taiwan or China like an old GI Joe because <laughs> <laughs> they're all we're, they're, you're just going to have Hasbro kids that are like half plastic. Yeah. And like we did this to ourselves uh and there's no getting out of it. Yeah, I mean I black I'm of pill. a different <laughs> I black pill game, black pill game. <laughs> I mean, I'm of a different persuasion where I'm like, I'd like to do some harm reduction and like contribute to like a better stuff. But that that is just exacerbating it, and I know it because for every you know small thing we cumulatively try to do to make a difference, um, the other side is going to just accelerate their plan to like destroy everything, and they have all. The resources, capital, they have politicians in their pocket, whatever they need to do. So, like, every time you try and rebel against some establishment thing, it's just, like, Newton's laws of physics, like, equal and opposite reaction. Yeah, and I do think that you can make um, positive changes in your life. Uh, I think I think about my friend who was born in East Germany. And so when I asked her, like, where are you from? She's like, it doesn't exist anymore. And it's really cool. She doesn't see herself as like a German or uh, she is a nationless person. Cause like, but it's so, I think it's got to be mind bending to uh, realize how fake uh, nations are when the one that you were raised in disappears. Uh, but one thing that she learned where she was was like how to make all of her own clothes, how to make uh, a lot of her own stuff. She was one of the first person that I met that reused the same bottle over and over again before, like, Nalogene containers became popular. She, um, for gifts for everyone, she just made things for people. And I feel like that is kind of one real form of resistance. It's like you can't buy anything and uh, that isn't, like, made by slave labor. Like, you think, you know, whatever, it's a polo shirt. Like, this cotton was ethically sourced, but nah, man. Or, like, you eat a, a chocolate bar, like, little kids in some other country were, like, in a mine. Or not in a mine, but they were, like, plucking the cocoa. Yeah. So, but you can make your own things. And that is maybe not your own cocoa. <laughs> right. But you, this somewhere in the supply, uh, supply chain, there's some fucked up. Nefarious shit. Yeah. So, like, you know, limit your consumption and uh, and make things whenever possible. Be more of a creator than a consumer. Sure. That's a good message. <laughs> also, also, accelerate things until the world becomes a chaos world. Sure. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think, you know, I was I, I had my tongue in my cheek when I said that. But there is, there is an idea that uh, you have to create more discomfort among more people. For there to be change. Yeah, that's absolutely true. Everyone has to be outraged. You can't have... A, it's weird how they, like, let the air out of the tires. They go, like, all right, have a couple protests. Why don't you guys? And then go back to the way things were. Just forget about it. You guys got your protests out. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's not how change happens. Like, it just has to be relentless. And the truth of the matter is, like, people have to be so committed that they're willing to, like, lay down their lives. And I don't think many people are. I'm, I personally am not trying to, like, die over That's right. stuff. Sometimes I'm like, I have, like, some stuff I have to finish before I die. Yeah. So, so you know, uh, until there are people that feel that, um, that all the bridges have been burned, there will be no change. So, or I guess you can vote. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I was watching RoboCop two, and uh, that's my favorite one. Yeah, shout outs to RoboCop two, the best of the only two I've seen one and two. And uh, what I found interesting was the rewatching it as an adult. There's the mayor, and the mayor character in it, he's hilarious, and he, uh, the city's going bankrupt. Because it, the city owes all of this money to OCP, the corporation, 
And what that made me think about was it doesn't matter who we elect if the institution itself is so in debt that the elected official is powerless. It's just a figurehead. Because throughout the movie, he's like yelling at the CEO of OCP and trying to do anything he can to, to like make to, to make money to balance the budget in his in his city. And uh, yeah, that's yeah. And that relates to Puerto Rico and people being upset with the with the Puerto Rican government for the recent uh, blackouts, uh, electrical grid blackouts, or you know how inefficiently things are run. It's like, well, I mean, I guess you can elect those people, but if there's a board that controls the money that they have, you know, there's it's, there's no real power. Literally, yeah, it's like puppetry and like pageantry. It's all bullshit. Like. That exists in the corporate pl- uh, landscape, too. They'll give someone a lofty-sounding title, but then there'll be, like, some gatekeeper or controller that actually is, like, behind the scenes, like, shutting down every, like, progressive thing they're trying to do. I've been in places like that. It's stupid. I call it playing house, where they go, like... Or I call it the sheriff's badge, where, like, when you're a kid and, like, someone goes, like, here's the sheriff's badge. You're sheriff for the day. You should be a snitch on everyone in the class who's misbehaving or whatever. They give someone some false power, but they're really just trying to extort or extrapolate whatever they want from them, and simultaneously, they're like a lame duck. Yeah. Uh, so there, that's uh, electoral politics for you. Yeah. It's all bullshit. Unless they have, you know, they actually have to have uh, power to make make changes. Uh, and while uh, a city is in debt to companies, that can't happen. Oh, dude, one more thing I want to talk about, though. This is so crazy. Mm-hmm. This week with John McAfee. I don't even know. I know nothing about this. Oh, God, I got to tell you, it's so fucking good. So McAfee started the famous antivirus software or whatever that was like a pioneer in antivirus shit back in the day. A bit of a computer like Lord. And he was also like a famous libertarian who was a maniac. And um, after he sold like McAfee for X amount of money, whatever he wound up walking away with, he was a multimillionaire. I wouldn't, I would say like he probably got short changed on that whole transaction but whatever he had enough money to leave the country and go you know various places and like set up shop anyways um he was accused of murdering like a neighbor and then he fled like that country and then like wound up like getting like caught in like spain or whatever do we know what uh he got caught for what type of murder it was was this a duel was this um, a lover? Was I think, well, so my understanding thrill was kill? It, it was like a neighbor and they were having like a continued like dispute. Sure, over the, the height of the hedges. <laughs> Not even. I think he was just living a wild lifestyle and the neighbor hated being his neighbor. Yeah. This is what I, I kind of remember from the documentary. But um, the, the real thing that was so crazy is I watched this documentary about him and in the documentary there were these women who were, like, one after the other. They were being interviewed, and they were like, he liked when I took a shit in his mouth. <laughs> he was. It turns out he was a shit guy. Sure. Who was, like, a shit-eating, like, monster. Yeah. Anyways, he... He's like, in my personal life, uh, no hygiene. But when it comes to computers, no viruses. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's like, human viruses, yes. Computer viruses? No. Yeah, so um, it just fucked because he, he quote-unquote, died in that jail, but he had, like, continually written things on Twitter and elsewhere saying, like, if I ever am found and they said that I killed myself, just know that I definitely didn't do it and that they took me out. And um, the thing that fascinated me, and this is what brought this to mind, was we were just talking about taxes and what have you. And... um, he was being extradited to the United States on tax evasion. Like, the one thing that they'll really chase a man down for is tax evasion. But, like, that's how extreme it got, that he got, like, yanked by Interpol and he was about to get extradited because he didn't, like, pay his taxes. That shit is crazy to me. And, like, would he really, like, kill himself over, like, 
he's going to come back to the United States and do like a Wesley Snipes ask a bid for not paying his taxes. Like, that's not worth killing yourself over, especially when you have so much more shit to eat, you know? Yeah. <laughs> uh, what enemies did he have? <laughs> he's a crazy asshole. Like, he probably had a lot of them, but there was some like, he claimed to have known a lot of things, like dark secrets about like government figures and what have you. So, yeah, I think that is the new realm of blackmail is all going to be data. Yeah, because in the past you could black you would blackmail people with a honey pot. You know, you invite them up and have the webcams watching while they indulge in something. Yeah, nefarious right. or delicious. But mostly nefarious. And <laughs> yeah. then, uh, but now, you know, you can just uh, find out what's on people's phones. So easily. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just them, like, drinking a baby, getting that adrenochrome. That's the best. Yeah. <laughs> 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 like a little orphan baby Jamba Juice. <laughs> yeah. It's like Hillary Clinton pounding, like, a, a morning <laughs> adrenochrome. Yeah, man. Yeah. But, you know, we don't have to worry about, like, conspiracies of people doing terrible things to children it's all true just look at the church yeah you know it's just not happening at pizza huts it's just happening at the church yeah exactly so that's my take on that (laughs) we're sponsored by the archdiocese (laughs) of greater new york yeah Uh, i mean they are discussing and all the stuff that they just found out about um the First Nations children in Canada, like exactly, it's getting crazier and crazier. And they're like just finding mass graves of children, and that was sponsored by the Catholic Church. So it's not just them molesting and like raping these children; they're killing them as well. Yeah, and it's all it's Indigenous kids. Mm-hmm. So uh, never forget, white supremacy is terrible and perverted and freaky. And the church is involved 100%. in all of it. 100%. So stop sending your kids to Catholic schools or send everyone's kids to Catholic schools because that is the only way to accelerate the absolute total destruction of the church once everyone's children are threatened with molestation and murder. That, that's when. <laughs> and I'm like, we need to stop this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Abolish public schools. Everyone's going to parochial schools. <laughs> yeah. What? <laughs> no, not my children. Yeah, exactly. And then that, then it would be a wrap for all of these uh, pederast uh, clerics. Yeah. Or we just put body cams on children. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Like, what this a- one's got a body cam on him. Leave him alone. <laughs> what a techno nightmare that is. I'd love, I I wish that we could dismantle Vatican City. There's just extensive libraries of uh, information that they have hidden and sequestered there. And all sorts of old tombs from uh, the new, from uh, North and South America and all of these old documents uh, that they keep, they, they keep the histories of all of these subjugated peoples hidden from public view. That's crazy. I had no idea. Yeah, man. There's like all these Aztec codices and stuff that are just in the Vatican right now that, y- you know, you can only see uh, with the special permission of what these like uh, these these freaks that dress in robes and believe in Jesus and yeah, molest that's... kids. I got to go to this child molesters library to read about the Aztec <laughs> codices. fucking savage. Bullshit. And I wonder what interest they have in it when like they don't believe in any of it. So why did they have to like take it away? Well, and hide it. Uh, I mean, if, if you hide, uh, it's easier to shape the narrative if there's no counter narrative. Right. You know, I mean, it's the same thing with museums. There's so many. Mu- Every museum that y- we go to, we're only seeing uh, like 10 percent of their of what they have because that's what they put on display. But they have all the archives. Or it's like uh, in Indiana Jones uh, to bring up a movie, a PG movie. But like, uh, you know, he, he gets the arc. And then at the end of the film, they put the Ark in a box, and then they just put the box in this giant warehouse with other mystical uh, artifacts from history. Right. And then they're like, all right, let's go get some monkey brain. That was a pretty cool adventure. Yeah. <laughs> Chilled monkey brain. Never thought about eating that. 
Yeah, that set my people back like five hundred years. You didn't, you didn't like that? No, not <laughs> at all. That was like the worst thing from my childhood. People were like, "You're Indian. You eat monkey brains." I was like, "Nope, we don't. <laughs> never had, never will." Like, Thanks, George Lucas. You fucking dick. Yeah, it's funny to watch these uh, a movie like that now with like, you know, now because uh, in DC I didn't have a lot of um, Indian friends. Right, there just isn't a huge population of them uh, of you guys. Right, yeah, so yeah. like uh, I remember her talking about Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom a few years back. I can't remember, but there were like a couple like as an adult, and there were a couple Indian comedians around, and I was like, "Oh!" And it was the first time I made that connection that oh, you guys probably hate this movie, yeah. <laughs> yes, <laughs> right? Because I hadn't did. had the context of like seeing it from someone else's perspective. Yeah, like being like, "Oh yeah." That sucks. <laughs> That's a prime example of what we're, we talk about on this podcast is literally George Lucas is like turkey neck wrote that fucking movie. He wrote that, right? Yeah. Yeah. And it, he never included an Indian person because they would go like, all right, a couple things here. Uh, this would never happen. And this is extremely offensive. And um, yeah, like, this is going to set our people back very badly because this is going to create a de- demented, like, view of us that's rooted in absolutely nothing but a weird man's imagination. Yeah, Kali Ma. Yeah, Kali Ma. I used to say that to my brother all the time and, like, dig into his chest and he'd freak out <laughs> <laughs> whenever when we'd wrestle. You know what that means? Black uh, mom. Hell yeah. I love that, dude. <laughs> yeah. What's up, Kali Ma? <laughs> <laughs> sick Ugh. well um learning new things on this episode yeah man hell yeah hell yeah th- th- thuggy life <laughs> <laughs> thuggy life dude yeah people don't even know that shit no i want to get that r- written on my chest thuggy life <laughs> uh-huh that thug came from india sure yeah and you know that but most people don't know yeah yeah, it's weird, too, that I was like, well, the Indian characters were less racist to me than, uh, in my head, than Short Round. Short <laughs> Round? Is, that was so racist. <laughs> yeah, Mr. I was Jones! Like, Mr. Jones! I was like, my kid, he's like an American kid, right? Like, why doesn't he just speak normal? <laughs> yeah, but he has to have an accent. It's, like, so confusing. You, you're telling me you were born and raised in America, but you have a hard time speaking English? That's crazy. Mm-hmm. And, like, Indiana Jones doesn't seem like someone... What happened in Short Round in the later ones? Because we see Indiana Jones has a son in, yeah. in the later films. There should also be Indiana Jones's like, 30-year-old uh, Short Round adopted son. Who's like, yeah. hey, I'm the one he le- loved and raised. Who are you? Yeah, fair <laughs> enough. And, like, basically Short Round at the end, he's just like, look, this is a good adventure, but why don't you fuck off? You're a pretty annoying Short Round. That's basically what happened. He fired Short Round, fired his sidekick. Yeah, and he just picked up Shia LaBeouf. Yeah. He was like, LaBeouf, you're my kid. But apparently, I just didn't give a fuck about in the, the other movies. Sure. So, uh, yeah, I get Indiana Jones is a deadbeat dad. <laughs> yes. No wonder Shia LaBeouf is so fucked up. Yeah. Well, I'd also be really embarrassed because he's so cringe. Like if Indy saw Shia LaBeouf making his like uh, his little videos over the last couple years. Oh God, yeah, yeah. This is my son. My son? No, <laughs> that's not what we do. We raid tombs and temples. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, is there anything else you want to cover today? That's it, my man. This is a great one. Yeah, it's this one for the books. We'll keep it cooking. Thank you all for listening to Hello Cartels. I'm Gabe Pacheco. You can find me at GabePack1 on Instagram. And as always, joined by Samir. You can find me at Samirmon, S A M E E R M O N, on Instagram and Twitter. You know, this is episode two, and we're still working it out. So uh, we would love you to send us any feedback that you have uh, to. Our Instagrams. Just DM us. We love it. Hell yeah. Looking forward to it. All right, friends. Uh, We'll see you next week with another episode. Bye.